Alrighty, sir. It's so very good to see you today. Um, <clears throat> so quick reiteration. We've got our D, G, B, and E. What we're going to be doing for the lesson for today is going to be on the right hand. I'm going to play it muted first, and then I'm going to play it with the open strings, and then with a simple right hand rhythm. Um, I'm sorry, left hand rhythm. So thumb and index finger. We're going to pluck the D and the G together, and then we're going to pluck the G and the B together, and then we're gonna pluck the B and the E together. Yeah, yeah. So what's gonna happen is when we're playing a C major up here, not a C major, a G major, we're gonna be playing the G up here, it's gonna make this sound. What I did was the next time I moved down my fingers over here to a G major seven and do the same movement. And then G dominant seven, same movement using the thumb and the pointer finger keeping these three out of the way then i'm going to go to a c major and do a g i'm sorry <clears throat> yeah no that's right a d and then this b together but when we play it we're actually going to be playing the c major which is going to give us the c and the e so we're going to have this and then a pluck together with the d and the g strings and then a switch to the c minor which is a good stretch having the same correlation with the, the outers, and then the bottom two, and then outer. So on the right hand, it's all gonna look like this. to the minor, bottom, outer, and then together up top with the two outer strings. In number correlation, it would be one and two, two and three, three and four, one and two, two and three, three and four, one and two, two and three, three and four, one and three, one and two, one and three, one and two, one and four. Yeah. Here's what it will sound like all together. right hand in the pinching. So here's a quick review on what we're talking about with the triads. When we are able to build A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, and then G sharp diminished, I can look up at the screen, up at my keyboard or here on the fretboard and see that if I were to have a G, B, and a D in the key of C, that would be my G major. So for me to have a diminished, <clears throat> I know that I'm having basically my, ra my, my raised fifth, and then I can have G sharp, B sharp, and D sharp. Now the G sharp and the D sharp make perfect sense, <laughs> but the B sharp is a C. So when I play a B sharp, which is a C, and I play a G sharp, and I play a D sharp, uh, where does this leave me? I've got a chord which will resolve to my original tone. So what happens when I'm going from my G sharp back into A, if I have anything other than my A, I can play my E7, which is basically, and it will resolve to my A. But for that D, I would have my D, G sharp, and my B. So what I'd like you to do is start seeing those half steps, the three and the four and the seven and eight in the Ionian with our major chord. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G major. Right
right after G major comes A minor. A minor has A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Yeah? After A minor, we've got B minor. B minor has B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. After B minor, we've got C major, which has C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. C. See where I'm going with this? Each time that I move up, I play the correlating. So if I were starting in any key, like let's say A major, a major would have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And if you look at your fingers while you're playing A, B, C, D, I'm sorry, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, you have to notice that in the key of A, if I were to play A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, that doesn't make a major. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. It makes a minor. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So what happens is we have to call those by sharps and flats, which means you can either memorize or you can play, but eventually, after you play these over and over again, it just makes sense that a F, A, C is an F major because you have a F, you have a C, and you have an A. When you play a G, the G, B, D makes sense because that was is what the major one, three, five is. So where we're at is after we have our G major, D major, and our D minor, we can add sus chords to those. That's where melodies come from because by taking my D minor and moving it up to an accent note which includes that note up top <clears throat> I'm basically taking my second scale degree after I get out of G I go to A and that becomes my root base to have my melody those accent notes mean absolutely nothing when you're correlating them to just the one four and five for majors, two, three, and six for the minors, and the seventh being a diminished. You can have a half or a full diminished, and you could also make those have different augmented tones, which we'll get into later. But the core of it is most of your melodies that are derived out of the chords we know come from these. So if you take, let's say, a uh, D major to a D major seven to a D dominant seven, our sus, Becomes a moving tone. Don't want to be a poet with my words out on the page. Hear how it moved the melody? So when I have a resolving back into a G major, G minor, back to a D major, the melody moved from having D, E, F sharp, G. So I had my D major, my one. My D major 7 influence, which is the one with an influence of the 7th tone. So you've got your major triad plus a 7th, which is your C sharp. Then you've got your D dominant 7, which is still a major tone, the triad, but it's replacing your D with a C, which makes it a dominant. Because the C is a whole step away from a D. Our C dominant, which makes our D dominant 7, when I add the sus note, slow cattle with me, D, E, F sharp, G, D, E, F sharp, G is four notes away. So when I have a D dominant seven and I add the G, it's still a D dominant seven slash G, sus four. It moves the tone to hear. It still incorporates that moving melody for us. So no matter what key you're doing it in, uh, so what I would suggest is take that concept of playing any major chord, moving it that major chord to the major seventh of that chord, 
moving that major seventh to the dominant of that chord and then adding the sus on that dominant to hear how when you resolve that dominant to the fourth that it makes a movement and that fourth to a minor and then resolution back to the major tonic makes a beautiful melody that one that i did was in g i think i did one in d how about one in a a major seven a dominant seven seeing i hope that the sus2 and the sus4 aren't um um awkward they should be movers they basically if we're to get down to brass tacks they make the increments of all the intervals greater because when you put two majors together like in the key of g major we'd have g major a minor b minor after B minor, we have C major, then D major. That C and D, two majors together, have way more of a pull towards our dominant note, which is our fifth, than they do towards our second note, which would be our sub uh, subtonic. So a A minor has less pull towards a D major than let's say a C major has towards a D major. And if that doesn't make sense, just look at most music. It's one, four, five. <laughs> most music that we hear on the radio is in the beat of 120. It plays one, four, five, and some variation might throw in a minor six, but it correlates and it has this nice wrap up where uh, most music we listen to uses a sus here and there or a lending tone, that seventh tone, just to move the accent notes, which are basically the melodies that we hear. Um, so like in... Um Those two are played together, and if I had a D to a any other chord, like inside that, um, inside those two, so if I went from a D major to an E minor, it would work. to go to the other major in a western ear makes more sense so that's what we teach here how to hear that in interval oral skills i hope today's lesson was fun i had a great time too i will see you next week aloha